Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. I'm Steve Leto. Today we're going to talk about the five dumb argument starters that I always see uh, posted in response to things that I put up on YouTube. And what I'm getting at here is this. A lot of people comment on my videos, and I'm used to this idea because I used to write a lot for Jalopnik uh, and Opposite Lock. And people were allowed to comment on the postings there as well. So I'm in the habit of reading things that people post in response to anything I post on the internet. And I often will have discussions with people who ask questions or make comments. And uh, that's perfectly normal. But the weird thing is, and I, I mentioned this the other day, that there are a couple different ways that people will posture or frame their question or their comment. And some of them are just obnoxious and they're idiotic. But they do it anyway, and I don't know if they do it because they don't know any better or if they're doing it on purpose to be annoying. But I'll give you an example, and I've got five of these. But the number one thing that bothers me is when somebody will say in response to a video or a big concept, they'll go, what part of, square brackets, fit anything in there you want, what part of this do you not understand? And then they'll put something in there that's a very discreet idea or concept. And it's almost always they've picked some weird little part of the argument and stuck it and just like, what part of that don't you understand? And number one, it's usually not the part we were talking about or the part that I was talking about in the video. And, and number two, um, that's just an obnoxious way of posing a question. Because usually, if it was actually something I didn't understand, asking me, what part of it I don't understand actually doesn't help anything. If you legitimately think I don't understand something, wouldn't you be better off saying, hey, I'm curious. You said this. I believe this. Um, how is it that your belief squares with mine or where's the disconnect? But instead you say, what part of this don't you understand? And you pick some weird part and it's like, <laughs> This is going to be a, a, a fruitful conversation. And again, like I said, I understand many people are not looking for a fruitful conversation. They simply want to go on the internet and argue. Like Homer Simpson arguing with a parrot. You know, hey, there's a parrot you like to argue with. Oh, hey. <laughs> Number one, what part of don't you understand? Every single one of these, by the way, is going to have a, 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 a concept where you could take the sentence and just jam anything you want into the square brackets. So number one is what part of this do you not understand? Number two is, um, and this is usually when I explain what the law is or what a legal concept is or something like that, and somebody wants to argue with me, and I've mentioned before that I'm an attorney. I actually went to law school, took a bar exam, passed it, was admitted to practice law in the state of Michigan, where I've been practicing on it for 28 years, coming up pretty soon. And I also taught law school for 10 years, and I've written a lot about the law, and I've spoken a lot about the law, and I've made a lot of videos about the law. And somebody will want to argue with some point I made about the law. And rather than saying, hey, Steve, I did some research, and you said this, and I found this, and I'm just curious how we get those things to square with each other, people will say, I talked to a, and then that's, that's what the bracket is, who said something contrary to what you just said. And it's usually I talk to a judge, I talk to a cop, or I talk to a former judge, I talk to a retired cop, and it's almost always a person of either authority or quasi-authority, but they'll say, I talked to a blank, and he said this, or she said this. And what's interesting about this is we're talking about the law. Most people would recognize that, number one, if you talk to somebody and you're telling me what they said, that's hearsay. <laughs> Now, this is not a courtroom, so the admissibility problems aren't necessarily a problem. But who is this person you talked to? And did you actually ask them the exact question I was answering in my video? And by the way, why would a cop who's retired, probably in another state besides Michigan, actually know more about the law in Michigan than I would? And did you actually show him my video and say, what are your thoughts on this? Because it's usually, no, no, I talked to this person years ago and they told me this. And some of the things I've been told that were told to people by these figures of authority, it's often nonsense. You know, so I talked to a fill in the blank and, and he or she said this. How do you answer that? Well, 
unless you give me that person's name and let me call them to find out exactly what they meant by what they said, um, this isn't really helping any. So to suggest that you got your information from some authority figure um, actually is not a terribly good way of starting a discussion either. Um, it, and I, like I said, I, I get that one almost daily. Number three is where you start the comment by saying, I can't believe you don't know blank. I can't believe you don't know this. And it's almost always something that just didn't get mentioned in the video or in the article. And so I'm, I'm talking about something and somebody will go, I can't believe you didn't know that the lemon law doesn't cover motorcycles. No, I, I knew that. I've written articles about that. I've done videos on that. I just didn't mention it in this video because it wasn't relevant. But they'll say, I can't believe you didn't know. And like I said, they'll, they'll throw in a topic that usually is something either I know, or I've had people actually throw in things that were wrong. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't know that a cop has to tell you he's a cop if he's undercover. Um, so starting a discussion or a, 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 a post uh, underneath video by going, I can't believe you didn't know. Um, it's, it's silly. Um, it's also making a big assumption because it's probably something I did know if it's true. I just chose not to mention it in that particular video. But I, again, I also see these underneath other people's videos. It's not just me. Okay, so this is, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is advice that everyone can take. And perhaps if you're thinking about having discussions that are fruitful on the internet, you might want to avoid these constructions unless you're really just trying to start an argument. By the way, when I see most of these comments, I just delete them. But anyways, number four, people will often say the law in my state or the law where I live says this. And they'll, they'll, they'll say something silly. You know, the law in my state is they can't arrest you for shoplifting once you make it in the parking lot. Uh, the law in my state says they can't arrest you for shoplifting until you pass a cash register. The law in my state says an undercover cop has got to identify himself to you if you ask him. He cannot lie to you and say, I'm not a cop. <laughs> now, the funny thing is that I routinely ask people, if that's the law in your state, can you send me a citation for it? Show me this, the citation so I can look it up in the law books. And people either ignore that or they'll say, I'm not a lawyer, that's your job. Wait, if you told me it's the law in your state, it should be easy to find. But, you know, I, 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 I get this comment from people in the other 49 states. If people tell me it's the law in Michigan, I'll very quickly look it up and figure it out. But more often than not, people will tell me these things. And I had a guy tell me that it was the law in his state that if a woman is driving a car, a man must walk in front of her with a lantern clanging a bell, and the woman can't drive faster than three miles an hour. But this is one of those silly old laws that's still on the books in my state. I said, what state are you in? No response. <laughs> Many of those, by the way, are just urban legends, but that's okay. Number five, following your logic... And then you insert some insane res res result that couldn't make sense. So following your logic, police cannot arrest shoplifters. Or following your logic, police can arrest everybody. Or following your logic, and it's usually being made by somebody who's not following the logic in the least. Huh? <laughs> but again, that's how you make a statement on the internet to somebody that you either didn't understand what they're saying or you're simply trying to annoy them. But... It would be much better to phrase that one, I'm just curious, because if it's really true that A and B are true, and B and C are true, then isn't such and such true? You know, you could ask that question politely, but to say, now, following your logic, blah, 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 and you name some absurd result, and, and again, that's, that's not really very helpful. And by the way, again, like I said, all of these statements uh, are all in the form of something where there's a, a blank that you can fill in. You know, what part of this don't you understand? I talked to a retired person who said, I can't believe you didn't know this, or the law in my state says this, or following your logic, absurd result here. Um, those are the five that annoy me the most, but, but there's actually one more. And this is the one that I think is absolutely hilarious, is that I will talk about various legal topics 
on my channel here, and I have spent some time talking about how you need a driver's license, uh, how police can pull you over and, and you know ask you questions at the side of the road, and they can ask you your name, and if you give them your name, it's not self-incrimination. You can't refuse to answer your name under the fifth, things like that. And what's funny is I've pointed out that there are people on the Internet who make these claims on videos in you, on YouTube. But they'll actually say, you know something, I get pulled over all the time and the cops don't write me tickets. Or I get pulled over and the cops write me tickets and I go into court and get the tickets thrown out and then I sue them and they owe me money. And the funny part about this is that, I've mentioned this before, in most states when you go into court, there's paperwork involved. So if you go into court, like Carl Miller, the guy who claims that he would go into court and routinely get stuff thrown out of court, and he's done entire videos, and he's passed away apparently now, so I, I feel bad picking on him because he was a liar. But um, the fact is that while he was alive, he lied and he made these silly videos that people believe to be true. And he claims that he went into court repeatedly and got things thrown out and had entire courtrooms where the, every single person in the courtroom got the thing thrown out because he was there. He's like, Jesus, he could just kind of spread the genius around. And... Um, the, the funny thing is that I've met people who claim this, and, and I've had people tell me, this, yes, Steve, I've, I've, I've beaten this 27 times, or I've, I've, I've won these gigantic lawsuits against the police for violating my rights. And I'll say, if that's true, then you have a judgment showing that, right? Or you have a piece of paper showing, can you send me a copy, let me see that? And I've yet to have a, anybody send me a single piece of paper confirming anything they were ever told. And, and you know, I say, well, but if you did that, you should have a piece of paper proving that, right? And if you watch the videos, you'll see, you know, the, the, the sovereign citizens at the side of the road. And they'll tell a police officer, they'll go, by the way, you know, uh, I'm going to sue you personally. And I'm going to own everything you own because um, I've done that before. Why tell the police officer? Why not pull out a copy of the judgment and show it to them? Go, hey, look at the judgment I got against one of, your, one of your cop buddies. Oh, it's because you don't have the piece of paper. And I've mentioned before, in fact, I actually just happened to have it sitting right here. You know, here's a transcript of a case. And this is an actual trial that I took, you know, that I, I, I took part in, and I, I won this trial. And if anybody were to say, Steve, can you prove that you won this case that you claim you had back in the 41B Judicial District in Michigan back in 1995, you claim you won that case. How do we know you won that case? I can pull out the transcript and show you, because there's a transcript of the case. And, oh, by the way, there's a judgment at the end of the case. I have a copy of that, too. The judgment shows I won the case. So when somebody tells you or tells me and says, hey, look, Steve, I just, I, I've, I've won this repeatedly. These people are so naive, they don't realize that what they're saying is something there'd be a paper trail for. There would be paper and evidence of what you've done. So you don't say like, oh, yeah, I climbed Mount Everest. Do you have a picture of yourself up there? No, no I, I, I didn't bring a camera. I, for, I, I forgot to bring a camera. Of course you take a picture of yourself on the top of Mount Everest if you're there right? And if you were in court and you won and you got a judgment, piece of paper, you could show that to people. Look, I got the piece of paper. Carl Miller made video after video saying, I went into court here, I went into court there, I went into court. I, I, I won, I won, I won. Never once held up a piece of paper saying, oh, by the way, here's the piece of paper I got that proves what I'm saying. And for those of you who say, well, Steve, not all courts are courts of record. In Michigan, they are. And Carl Miller claimed he's doing all of that in courts in Michigan which he never got any paperwork for, strangely enough. But, again, I've digressed far afield, and I apologize, but that's simply one of the other things that I see a lot where people comment and they'll say, Steve, I've won this, I've done this, I've, I've, I've actually beaten these people at their own game, I don't know, whatever, use your own cliche there. And I'll say, great, send me a copy of the piece of paper, I'd love to see it. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't get one. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also had a guy go, Steve, it's not worth my time to dig it up. I go, I'll pay you 100 bucks to send me a copy. Because it's not worth 100 bucks. Because I, I, I'm, I'm too busy. It's not worth it for you to earn $100 when all you got to do is pull a piece of paper out, photograph it with your smartphone, and email me the picture. And I'd give you 100 bucks for that. It's not worth it for you. Ah, yes. Your time is that valuable. But back to the five stupid argument structures. Okay, number one, what part of this do you not understand? Number two, I talked to a authority figure who said, three, I can't believe you didn't know, fill in the blank, four, the law in my state says, but I don't know the citation to it, and five, following your logic, 
boom, absurd result. So, <laughs> like I said, if you want to have a discussion below my videos, let's discuss. If you want to start a stupid argument, use one of those five and see what happens. Otherwise, questions or comments, put them below. Talk to you later.